Matter flows through every fair Life totals dropping, feel the air Tapping lens, drawing destiny Victory's close, just to wait and see Magic dreams in my hand tonight Summon legends, see them ignite Battlefields, roaring cars in flight In this realm of magic, I take flight Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Deck Tech In the Deck Tech series we're doing on Magic World 30 uh, so today we're going to be looking at Marcio Carvalho's Golgari mid-range deck that made it all the way to the finals of Magic World 30. Um, so we're going to take a look at the deck, we're going to break it down, we're going to see how much it's going to cost you to build it in paper, we're going to check out the sideboard, we're going to figure out uh, what cards in the sideboard are going to be good for what matchups and what you should be taking out and putting in, things like that. So let's go ahead and break this deck down. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for commenting on the last video and giving me a little bit of feedback. Um, because a couple of you were like, hey, I'd really like to know about the sideboard and maybe how I should sideboard against certain matchups. So that is why we are adding that into this video. Now, the video may be a little bit longer than the last video, but hey, it's a lot of information to break down. So let's just jump into it, right? So this green-black deck, uh, it can come out super fast, super aggressive, but it can also play into the controlling strategy of kind of minimizing the damage from the other opponent, kind of taking over the board control, and then really closing out the game. And that's typically how mid-range plays. If you don't understand how mid-range is, it can play both ends of the spectrum. So uh, here we go. We're going to break down the creatures right now that really pack the punch in this deck, which is the Archfiend of the Dross is the biggest one here, right? It's a demon. Two and two black for a 6 6 flyer that comes in with four oil counters. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove an oil counter from Archfiend of the Dross. And if it has no oil counters on it, you lose the game. Whenever a creature an opponent control dies, its controller loses two life. Then we roll down to Glissus Sunslayer. There's only two copies of it in this deck, but it's really strong. It's one, one black, one green for a 3 3 with first strike and death touch. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, choose one. You draw a card and you lose a life, destroy target enchantment, or remove up to three counters from target permanent. Uh, Mosswood Dread Knight. It's a one in one green for a 3-2 Trampler that whenever it dies, you may cast it from your graveyard as an adventure until the end of your next turn. The adventure is one in a black. You draw a card and you lose a life. Very simple. Very straightforward. Uh, Sentinel of the Nameless City. I thought this was an interesting one of. It's a big body for three mana. Three, four, three... Uh, for two and a green, Vigilance, and then whenever it attacks or enters the battlefield, create a map token. So you can apply pressure while still holding it back to block. Um, and then the map tokens, just like all the other stuff in this deck, is all about netting you extra cards. If you get a land off of it, boom, you filter the land off the top, and hopefully you're drawing more gas after that. If not, you're seeing what your next card is while pumping up your creatures. So it's a really strong one of utility. Um, then we get into Tranquil Frillback. And this is a two of in the deck. It's two and a green, but you can kicker it up to three times, paying green each time to choose one or more um, of the abilities. But you can only choose one of, like you can either choose one gain four life, one exile target graveyard, or one destroy target artifact enchantment. You can't choose the same mode twice. So um, it's a really good utility card, really good against the beatdown strategy, it's really good against the control strategies. So um, I, I like it as a two of, you don't wanna draw too many of them, but you also wanna be able to get there with it uh, a, a game or two. And then the last creature to look at here is Caustic Bronco, very strong two mana, two two, that when it attacks, reveal the top card of your library, which is a very dark, dark confidant effect, um, and put it into your hand. You lose life equal to the card's mana value if Caustic Bronco isn't saddled. Otherwise, each opponent loses that much life. So playing this turn two and then dropping a Frillback, a sent Sentinel, or a Moss, Bri Moss Bridge, Mosswood, or Glissa on turn three to saddle this guy up, very strong. Um, so that's, if you notice, a lot of the creatures that can come down after it all have that three power to be able to saddle this guy up. Um, so let's get into the card engine, right? Th this deck has a lot of draw. Um, Unholy Annex. We've talked about this card in the last deck tech. We're going to talk about it again. At the beginning of your end step, if you control a demon uh, after you've drawn your card, they lose two life, you gain two life. Otherwise, you lose two life. So 
you have Unholy Annex, you have Mosswood, you have Glissa, you have Caustic Bronco. All of these have drawbacks to their drawing, right? Except for Unholy Annex if you can get a demon out. So you got Archfiend of the Draw, so you got the demon from the chamber to be able to mitigate that damage and actually gain some life in the process. But another card to really help you out in that life gain is Restless Cottage. It's a land, but it's one of the man lands of the deck. And you're able to uh, pay two, a black and a green, to turn it into a 4-4 creature that when it attacks, create a food token and exile up to one card in a graveyard. So you're able to get rid of some problems, some cards like an Oculus or a Hadi Dijin, or maybe an Atraxa or something out of the graveyard they're going to reanimate. And then you get to create some food tokens where you can be gaining back some of your life that you've been losing as you've been progressing through the game. Um, so with that, let's look at the let's look at like the support package, which is like the instants and sorceries of the deck, right? You got three anoint with affliction, three cut down, four go for the throw, one, one dreams of steel and oil, and three duress. So I like that there's only like four discard spells and there's 10 removal spells, right? And they're hard removal spells. They're not conditional like minus two, minus two, or deal three damage. They're just a straight kill. Um, and then the Dreams of Steel and Oil is a one of. I like that as a way to combat against either the mirror match or like a hyper aggressive deck that has, you know, their top end creatures of like Knight of Errant Eos, Knight Errant of Eos or something like that. And then uh, taking like an Abhorrent Oculus and being able to get it from their hand and graveyard is super powerful for one mana. And it exiles it. So it's just gone. Um, and then the Duress really helps against the. Um, non-creature strategy <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> and so it really plays into like even if you're going up against a mirror match taking one of their unholy annexes and then playing your own to be able to just keep that card draw engine going while they're struggling to keep up with you things like that so um looking at the mana base it's very simple um you've got your dual lands you know two underground mortuaries which is a surveil land which will help you filter through the deck You've got the Blooming Marsh and Restless Cottage also with Land of Ways for dual color. But then you got two Fountain Port. Like, Fountain Port is a very, very good utility land. Um, you can pay two, sacrifice token, draw a card. So if you're making map tokens off the Sentinel, you can sacrifice the map tokens to draw cards rather than try to, like, take a chance at getting a land or seeing with an extra card. You just immediately draw that card. Now your map tokens now turn into a clue token. Um, and then you have pay three or... Yeah, pay three tap, pay one life, create a blue fish token, which you can turn into draw engine or your chunk blocking with it or something along those lines. And then you can pay four to tap to make a treasure token if you're trying to ramp up. But majority of the time, this tap four really never really gets used. So it's more along the lines of the two and the three activation ability is the stronger points of this card. All right, so let's, let's jump into the sideboard, right? So you've got Choking Miasma. This is a sweeper, right? It's brought in for those hyper-aggressive, Jeskai Convoke, uh, red-white, you know, mono-red aggro decks that got a lot of one drop, one one toughness, two toughness creatures. You can kicker it for a green to put a 1-1 one -one counter on one of your creatures, but I really, with a lot of the creatures you have in the deck, they have a lot of toughness to them. The only creature I could see you really doing that for is like your Bronco or your Dread Knight, but 99.9% .9 of the time, this is being cast for one and double black to kill off the board. Um, it's two of, so, you know, you bring them in against those hyper-aggressive strategies, and then you're ready to go. Um, I think what you're trying to take out in those um, situations is probably your duress. Um, you're, you're probably going to take out three duress, and you're going to put in two choking uh, miasma, and probably a Gix command and or harvest of misery, because duress and aggro strategies is a very bad card <clears throat> then you have dreams of steel and oil a second copy in the sideboard i think you bring this in against like oculus and some of the other like maybe the mirror matches or demir demons or things like that. the the decks that don't have a ton of creatures in them but their creatures are a problem like atraxa things like that so if like you don't want to deal with those bigger creatures you can just outright get rid of them and I think that's really good. So duress, same thing. This is the opposite. You're bringing this in against like your control strategies, your non-creature heavy decks, like the ones that are, 
either like comboing off or they're just really like you you also want to bring this in against oculus because they are one of those decks that's very non-creature heavy so taking some of their card draw taking some of their reanimation spells like recommission and helping hand is really good um so yeah that's that's one of one of the reasons to bring this in ghost vacuum is the two of this was probably and i say probably for oculus and any reanimation strategy um just because it's basically relic of progenitus you just exile target card from a graveyard the six ability i don't see it being used too often but i'm sure it could be used once or twice in a blue moon but i think it's more along the lines of you're just trying to stop the reanimation strategy Gix command talked about this one already kind of you bring this in against hyper aggressive strategy um you can be able to make it to where they sack their errant knight eos knight of eos and then wipe their you know two power creatures or maybe you give one of your creatures lifelink and kill all their two power or return up to two creatures like return back uh you know maybe like a glissa or a sentinel or fro back and kill off their smaller creatures things like that this is a very utility card that's why it's a one of it's really good but it, i watched it win a couple games just outright you you know you rip it uh, I watched him just, like, decimate a board with it and then just kill his opponent. So, uh, Harvest of Misery, very similar to Gix Command. Uh, you bring that into, against hyper-aggressive strategy. You can give all of their creatures minus two, minus two, and of turn. Or you can just use it as, like, a spot removal if you're just, like, in a dire situation and that's your only option. Um, so, it's a, it's a very strong card that can be utilized, too. And then with Gix Command you can actually bring it back from the graveyard. Um, you know, return your two creatures back. So if you had to spot removal and then you're like, I really need this later in the game to do that effect, you could do the Gix command to get back to wipe their two powers and then have that as a backup to be able to wipe the board again if needed to be. Liliana of the Veil, very straightforward card. It's been in Magic for a long time. Um, definitely bringing this in against you know those those hyper control decks um even against certain mid-range like i would say like blue black mid-range or even blue black demons i would bring this in um mainly because they're trying to stick like one creature um or like if you're you know really ahead on cards and you've got an unholy annex out and they don't and you're just drawing two three cards a turn with either like maybe a bronco or something then having them discard their hand down to really make them make choices on what cards they want to keep uh can really help you gain an edge in that game so very strong card and if you get her to the six i'm pretty sure it's pretty close to a game over there um nissa she's you know she's strong but i don't i didn't really see her get played that often i may have missed it um but i think this is more of like the mirror match um or maybe like bringing it in against uh, enchantment heavy decks like Enduring Curiosity, Enduring uh, Prowess, Pro yeah, Team or Prowess. Because the first ability gets you a creature the size of her loyalty plus one and then minus one destroys target enchantment. So the minus seven, I really don't see that being a big factor, but it could play out in a game or two, but I think it's very seldom that it's going to. Uh, maybe if you're... But it, it, even then, like if you're not if you're playing against a hyper aggressive deck and you drop this on turn seven, like I feel like you're probably already winning the game by then with other cards. So I honestly think this is more for like a control matchup or maybe the mirror matchup, things like that. Then we go into Terra Sunder, just a great overall in common. I mean, this card definitely comes in when you see that you're dealing like with Teamer Prowess or you're dealing with um, Enduring Curiosity from the black-blue mid-range decks, things like that. It just exiles it so that they don't get their permanent to come back as a just a quote-unquote enchantment rather than, you know, it was a creature, now it's an enchantment. Now you just absolutely get rid of it. Also helps against, like, Leyline Binding. Um, what else are we talking about? Any real problem enchantment, you know what I mean? So, and even then, if you've got a kicker it, it doesn't feel bad to kick her this thing and exile like an Atraxa or Archfiend of the Dross or some big powerful creature that's being a problem. And then last but not least, Tranquil Throwback. Uh, want more in the sideboard here as a way to bring in against those aggressive strategies, maybe like Mono Red, Gruul Prowess, Jeskai Convoke, 
um, to be able to gain that four life, maybe get rid of a problem, uh, problemsome enchantment like a like they monstrous raged one of their dudes, and you get rid of that token so that it no longer has trample, things like that. So very strong card, very strong utility card, right? So let's get into the cost, right? So you've got a couple cards that are, you know, they're worth some money. Like Unholy Annex, you're looking at $10.32 a card. Uh, Bronco and Dross are in the three, four, five dollar range. Uh, Glissa, Frillback, they're also in the five dollar range. Um, your underground mortuaries are going to run you $15 a piece. Those surveil lands are just so good. I keep telling people, buy boxes of murder. They're so low, and you're going to get your money back by buying just a box if you don't want to buy the, the cards themselves and just take a chance. But uh, overall, the main board's going to cost you about $180. Uh, a lot. Of, the only uncommon that's worth a ton of money in the main board is cut down. Uh, and those are running at almost $4 a piece. Um, other than that, most of your commons and uncommons are, are like 50 cents. Um, and then your sideboard's gonna run you about 70 bucks. Uh, like Terra Sunders, a couple bucks. Uh, Choking Miasma, Dreams, and Duress really aren't worth a whole lot. But Ghost Vacuum, I was surprised. It's almost seven bucks. Um, Lilies, you know, those are 15 a piece. Um, frillbacks worth some money. Harvester, um, let's see, I think Harvester is about a dollar. Yeah, that's what it was. Dollar, a couple bucks there. Did I get that right? I gotta look real quick because I may have not wrote Harvester down. Why is it not coming up? <laughs> Technical difficulties, please wait. Uh, Harvester of Misery was seven dollars, uh, uh, six eighty-five. That's what it was. Okay, so it's seven bucks. I forgot. I did write it down. I just forgot which one it was. Um, I'm looking back here because Ghost Vacuum was up there. It was it, Ghost Vacuum's like six, seven bucks. So it's like twelve bucks to have two of them in there. That's what it was. Gig Span's like a buck. So your sideboard's gonna run you about seventy bucks. So. In all, this deck's going to cost you about $250 to $260, depending on uh, fluctuation of when you buy these cards and things like that. Because I'm doing this, you know, uh, November 4th, so by the time they actually, you know, you actually get a hold of them, they may have dropped in price, they may have gone up in price, but that's the rough ballpark of what it's going to cost you. So... That's what I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys got something else. It is a little bit longer than the last one just because we did break down sideboard and realistically uh, what this deck is supposed to do and how it works. So with that, I'm gonna leave you guys like I always leave you. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And again, if you guys got any feedback, any positive feedback, constructive criticism please leave it down in the comments below i'd love to hear it. i i appreciate what you guys put on the last one um it, it's funny because i thought about doing the sideboard and then i was like nah i'll just work on the main board because a lot of people play best of one and things like that but then you know a lot of you're like hey i want sideboard tech so happy to provide it happy to show you guys what um what i'm seeing with it and all of that but with that Again, I thank you guys, all the Patreon members, all the subscribers, everybody. Um, without you guys, I would just be a guy talking into a mic to myself. So <laughs> with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Stay syrupy, my friend. Magic dreams in my hands tonight. Some legends see them at night. Battlefields, roaring cars in flight. In this realm of magic, I take flight.